Hello! This is the Kindergarten Kaleidoscope Podcast. Welcome! Today is Season 1, Episode 1 on January 22nd, 2023. And this episode will look into play for cognitive development. I am Miss Deborah Fisher. I'll be speaking with you today about this. And let's dig pretty deep into what play looks like for cognitive development in preschool and kindergarten. So Jean Piaget has stated it is with children that we have the best chance of studying the development of logical knowledge, mathematical knowledge, and physical knowledge, and so forth. But with this knowledge in mind, Jean Piaget had turned the tables in child developmental theology, and he found that a child's mind is really extraordinary. Piaget's theory of cognitive development explains how children create a mental model of their world. He disagreed with the suggestion that intelligence was a fixed trait and regarded cognitive development as a progression which occurs due to the biological maturation and interaction with one's environment. Before Piaget, the common assumption in psychology was that children were less competent thinkers than adults. Piaget demonstrated that young children think in very different ways compared to grown adults. He believes that children are born with basic mental structures on which all learning and knowledge are supported. Now, Piaget saw play as the assimilation of new material into existing cognitive structures. Piaget theorized categories of play and aligned them with cognitive developmental stages. The goal of Piaget's theory is to explain the ability for infants and then the child and then as you grow older to develop into an individual who can reason and think using hypotheses. There are three basic components to Piaget's cognitive theory. The first one is called schemas, which are building blocks of knowledge or building blocks of intelligent behavior. Now this is a way of organizing knowledge. Schemas can also be thought of as units of knowledge, each relating to one part of the world, such as objects, actions, and abstract concepts. The second component to Piaget's cognitive theory is adaptation. Adaptation is that process and transition from one stage to another, stages such as assimilation, accommodation, and equilibrium. Assimilation uses existing schema to deal with something new, such as an object or a new situation. Accommodation is what occurs when existing schema does not work and needs to be changed to deal with the new object or situation. Equilibration is the force which moves development along. Piaget believed that cognitive development did not progress at a steady rate, but rather in leaps and bounds. Equilibrium occurs when a child's schemas can deal with most new info using the assimilation process, but an unpleasant state of disequilibrium occurs when new info is not able to be fitted into existing schemas. The third component to Piaget's cognitive theory is his four set stages of cognitive development. These would be the sensory motor stage from birth to two years old, pre-operational stage from two to seven years old, the concrete operational stage from 7 to 11 years old, and the formal operation stage from 12 years old and up as an adult. Now, Piaget's four sensory stages of cognitive development include these specific things. The sensory motor stage between birth and two is that main goal during the stage to to have object permanence. You can see this with babies and playing peekaboo. This is to understand that all objects still exist even when it is hiding. The pre-operational stage is next, and that's again between toddlerhood to age seven. During this phase, a child can think about things symbolically and which is the ability to make one thing stand for something other than itself. For example, such as a broomstick becoming a horse. After that, that concrete operational um, stage follows, and this is again between the ages of 7 to 11 years old. Piaget believed this stage was a major change in cognitive development for a child because logical and operational thought begins as a child learns to work things out internally in their head. And that fourth last stage is the formal operational stage, again from 12 years old and adolescence to adulthood. And during this time, a child can think about abstract concepts and logically test hypotheses. 
Now let's look at how one can design a play-based curriculum by demonstrating insightful lesson activities that would support Piaget's concepts of cognitive development. Here are some ideas noted that can nurture children and lets you STEM and some engineering abilities um, to work these ideas out. Okay, so the first following um, curriculum ideas can deal with reinforcing cognitive development using STEM with sensory motor play, symbolic play, and games with rules. Let's look into some ideas of STEM, that's sensory, um, uh, sorry, science, technology, engineering, and mathematic activities you can dive into that support the touch sense. Um, in preschool and kindergarten, this is so important. Um, so for example, we can do activities within our classrooms, for example, like heat sensitive color changing slime activities. You could have a Play-Doh um, shark where you can start feeding them special kind of gummy fish. You can have a Play-Doh um, brain and have the kids pretend to play um, brain surgeon. You can have a busy bag filled with rainbow prism ideas. You can also teach the children how to make small crystals with landscapes. You can also teach children how to do stop animation with using um, child-friendly computer um, technology. Some more STEM sensory activities that you can use, for example, using the taste sense, could be about how uh, yogurt is made or the biology of yogurt. You could do um, science experiments on how apples turn brown. You can learn about how to construct towers using Oreos, or maybe um, an experiment to work out why um, the sense of smell, how it works with making scented Play-Doh, or playing a game about what animals could smell like and how animals hunt with smell for dinner. Lastly, there's some other sensory activities you can use with STEM, such as making a PVC pipe xylophone with different kinds of plastic pipes. You can also teach kids how sound is made using drums, elastic rubber tops and different elements on top, such as rice, nuts, or pasta. Or you can even have kids learn how to make good rhythms with drumsticks as well. Let's get into some symbolic play ideas. Symbolic play is also greatly needed to support cognitive development. Symbolic play is when a child uses objects to stand in for other objects. You can have a child speaking into a banana like a phone or turning an empty box into imaginary things like a pirate ship or even a airplane. Children can also play with items to create superheroes, veterinarian clinics, an airplane voyage, pretend play elevators, they could pretend to be cowboys, or they can even have a pretend art gallery, coffee shop, and of course, don't forget how wonderful it could be to pretend to be firefighters, police officers. You can have grocery store play or even post office play. Lots of different ideas for symbolic play and it, the list can go on and on for preschool and in kindergarten. Lastly, um, it's important to think about games with rules to support cognitive development. This is having students participate in games with rules to understand turn taking, understand the rights and wrongs of certain elements of games, just understanding that there's certain um, rules and expectations when there's set, um, set games uh, in front of them during even just play or without in the outside world. There are several classic outdoor children games that children can do. You might know them. Some could be Octopus or Red Rover, Red Light, Green Light. Um, the classic version of Tag, Blind Man's Bluff, Capturing the Flag, Hide and Seek, and even Hopscotch or Jacks. Children can also find a lot of fun with playing Jump Rope, Follow the Leader, Simon Says, and one of my favorites is What Time Is It, Mr. Wolf? Again, games with rules can really help heartily build um, children's cognitive development with play. So again, to support Piaget's theory of cognitive development, teachers can focus on processing learning, not the product. Teachers can use methods for active learning to help students discover or explore the world around them. Teachers can have activities for students where they can work independently and cooperatively. Teachers can present students with real-world problems to create disequilibrium dis for the child. Hey, 
Can you figure it out? Give them time and space to do so. And as always, evaluate the level of the child's development so suitable tasks can be set to support the next steps for learning. Thank you for listening today to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please subscribe and like. And I look forward to meeting you next time for our next episode on the Kindergarten Kaleidoscope podcast. Take care.